Hi, my name's Ed I'm from Cyvex, and this week on Cyvex Says, we're talking about EGT sensors. So the question that's come to me this week is, I'm fitting an EGT sensor, uh, is one enough? It seems a pretty small, innocent question on its own, um, and why might you even care about this? Uh, let's find out. First of all, let's talk about what an EGT sensor does. Um, your engine obviously burns fuel and air. Um, this leaves the engine via your uh, cylinder head into your exhaust manifold. You may or may not have a turbo. Uh, and then this obviously dissipates through the exhaust system into the outside world. Um, but why are the temperatures of the exhaust gases that leave your engine important? Firstly, engines made of metal, it's made of aluminium, steel, iron, whatever. This melts, ultimately, you get this too hot, things melt. So how does an EGT sensor help you? By correctly positioning an EGT sensor, this allows you to see the temperatures of the gases leaving your engine. Should you run perhaps slightly too lean um, or in conditions of things to do with ignition timing, you may see situations whereby your EGT is dangerously high. There are other things which I'll come on to in a minute with EGTs as well, which relate to how your engine's running. So obviously in the EGT sensor is a really nice way to get an indication of where your engine is running at a given point in time. They're very fast to respond. They're not quite as fast as a Lambda sensor, but they respond within the seconds and they give you an indication of what's going on. Um, using an EGT sensor, it allows you to establish a good base level, and then you know your engine, if your engine's been happy with that. Say, for example, you've been driving around your car for um, in whatever performance state it is at that moment in time, and you know it's fine. Um, your tuner may say, yeah, this is great, it's no problem with that, and they're probably right. But by fitting an EGT sensor, you then have a base level. So let's say then further on down the line, you want more power, you want more um, boost or whatever it is you're doing. Um, and you have established already a baseline where you know it's all good. So if suddenly one day you're out for a drive and the EGT sensor goes really high, you know you've got a problem. Uh, you saved your engine potentially uh, before the damage has actually happened. Why use an EGT sensor uh, when we have wideband um, fuel monitors, uh, sensors and so on? Quite simply, a wideband fuel controller uh, and a lambda sensor, typically you only have one per bank on an engine. That is to say, if you have a four cylinder engine, an inline four, you'll have one lambda sensor that monitors all the exhaust gases leaving that engine. If you have one particular cylinder that's running differently to the other three, you don't know that. The lambda sensor can't see that, it can't differentiate on a per cylinder basis. It just gets the idea of that what the engines do in that particular bank um, and you don't get an overall view provided that all four cylinders are operating equally clue they often don't then using an e uh, using a lambda sensor is fine but what happens in a scenario whereby you might end up with a partially blocked injector or a misfire on one cylinder or any other operating conditions that can affect the efficiency of the engine how do you know um, a lambda sensor won't necessarily tell you that. You might see a slight change in the overall values. Um, um, so what can you do? Well, quite simply, the cheapest and the easiest way is to use EGT sensors. The sensors themselves aren't that expensive. Um, and there are various products out there that allow you to run an EGT sensor per cylinder. This is a great thing to do. Um, this is almost a crazy thing not to do if you're looking to optimize your engine. Why would you not want to know that all your cylinders are running equally? And what's the easiest way to tell that is to measure the temperature of the gases leaving each cylinder. So we have a product, of course we do. It's a KT8. This little box here connects to a CAN bus and allows you to run up to eight EGT sensors, streams it across CAN into our ECU or other ECUs, and allows you to very neatly, quickly and simply add multiple EGT sensors to your engine. So this is great. Let's say we've got an engine, it's normally aspirated. It doesn't necessarily have to be turbo. We're trying to tune the engine. It doesn't even have an airflow meter. It, it might not even have a map sensor. It could be purely tuned to position of the throttle. I open your throttle, that's all the air it's gonna get. It goes to the throttle bodies into the engine and leaves the other side. But with EGTs, you can check that each cylinder is operating 
as equally, say, as the other three. So if you have a discrepancy in one cylinder, that might be down to perhaps that cylinder or um, the manifold design in some way isn't so good, or the injector's partially blocked, um, or all any kind of manner of things that are very difficult to detect normally can be quickly established using EGT. And this is the same for turbos. Turbo engine operates under much greater cylinder pressures, um, much greater exhaust manifold pressures. Wherever you have higher pressures, you have more heat. And it's even more important on a turbo to monitor what's happening in the engine. And indeed, what's happening as, it, as the things, exhaust gases leave the engine. This is why we care so much about lambda sensors. Uh, this is why we care so much about using things like NOx sensors, just to keep an eye on everything. But quite often, EGTs are more overlooked, which is kind of surprising because they're not actually that difficult to fit. There is a few ideal places where you'd want to fit them. They all want to be kind of within about an inch of the cylinder head. So if this is your cylinder head, you've got your exhaust coming out there. Typically, you'd have about an inch or so, and they would be all into the airstream at an equal amount. Uh, so in doing so, your sensors naturally are reading under ideal conditions almost exactly the same and then when you come up on load or you come up on boost you may start to see one cylinder drift from away from the other and this is interesting because this has allows on ECUs that are capable and able to do so which is to be fair most these days it allows you to trim on a per cylinder basis and make sure that each individual cylinder is operating under the same working conditions. The other interesting thing is on cars that have perhaps too small turbos or operate with too much exhaust manifold back pressure. So that is the exhaust gases leave the cylinder head, enter into the turbo, but the turbos may be too small and imposes a massive restriction on the engine. When the exhaust valves open, rather than the exhaust gases going out, it tries to go in some conditions go back in. What this means is that you're mixing burnt exhaust gases with nice, fresh, cool incoming uh, fuel and air mixture. This is obviously not an ideal situation. And um, what this will lead to is you having to retard um, the ignition timing of an engine to deal with the fact that you can't operate such high cylinder pressures stably because you've got uh, um, burnt fuel gases already in your cylinder. How would you know that this is going to be a real problem in reality? Well, by igniting your fuel mixture later to prevent excessive cylinder pressures, you end up with an elevated exhaust gas temperature. And you will see this because your EGT numbers will start to rise quite high. Why is this bad? Firstly, your exhaust valves dissipate heat from the combustion when they are sitting against the cylinder head. So your cylinder comes up, the, uh, the fuel in air is ignited, the cylinder's forced down, and uh, as it, the valve is still shut. And while the, the exhaust valve is shut, all the heat from the previous combustion has been dissipated into the aluminium, usually, of the cylinder head. Um, if you ignite your fuel and air mixture late, then this fuel mixture is still burning while the exhaust valve opens and the cylinder pushes it back out. This can mean that you can burn out your exhaust valves and do damage to valve seats. Um, you can kind of, they'll in some cases can warp and distort and you end up with all kinds of other problems. So the interesting thing is that you will see elevated temperatures, potentially dangerous running conditions. Um, and in fact, if you're using high performance exhaust valves, the manufacturers may even be able to advise you on what temperatures are safe. And you'll be able to say, right, this is what I'm running it to. This is where it is and is that safe? And you will actually be able to answer that question with a yes or a no. You wouldn't see this with a Lambda sensor you would still see good air fuel ratios. The engine would, from all other perspectives from the outside, appear to be operating fine. You might notice that your exhaust manifold in some conditions is kind of glowing red, maybe more than it should do. That's not ideal. It may even be glowing in some cases bright red. Uh, consider the fact that in those instances, that's energy in your exhaust system that's been wasted and would be better put to use driving the cylinders or pistons within the engine itself. An EGT sensor, one per cylinder is actually a really interesting diagnostic um, and mo useful monitoring tool that is overlooked by quite a lot um, of engine builds and things that we see. Certainly in competitive uh, racing, that kind of competition stuff, or you might be doing drag racing or whatever it is you're doing. If you can't be sure that each cylinder is operating optimally and that they're all operating in a safe temperature range, 
um, that's quite a thing to be missing. And so by having EGT, one per cylinder, ideally not one monitoring all of that gases, because then you've just lost the benefit of them in the first instance, you have our, and are in a position of a load more information that you can make educated and quantifiable decisions going forward with where you're going with your engine tuning project. One other thing I don't think I've mentioned yet, misfires. If you have an engine that's suffering a misfire, how do you know what cylinder it is? EGT sensors, boom, straight away, you know it's that cylinder and you know where to start looking. Um, you'll see a cool air charge coming out of one cylinder versus the other three or four, five, six, however many cylinders there are. So this is a quick introduction, maybe an overview really of EGT sensors, why you'd want them, why really you want one per cylinder, what you can do with the information when it's picked up, taking your projects further. If you found this interesting, or if you have got any questions, ask them below, like this uh, video and uh, follow us for more. Yeah.